Hi, and welcome to Lesson 15-4, Special Quadrilaterals. Our learning goal will be to identify and classify special quadrilaterals. Our learning goals for the specific lesson will be to classify special quadrilaterals, understand that the sum of the measures of the angles of a quadrilateral are equal to 360 degrees, and to understand that properties of a figure in a category also apply to all subcategories of that shape. And we'll talk a little bit more about what that's going to mean as we get in the lesson. Please take a moment, pause, write down your learning goals, and press play when you're ready to begin. Our vocabulary for this lesson, um, the first word is parallel. And we're talking about lines in the same plane that never meet or cross. Our next vocabulary word is perpendicular, and that is two lines that intersect to form a 90 degree angle. Congruent means same size and same shape, and we're going to be talking about congruent lines whenever we look at quadrilaterals. The word bisect means to divide into two equal parts. And then our last vocabulary term is supplementary angles. These are two angles that add up to 180 degrees. Please take a moment, write these in your math journal, and press play when you're ready to move on. <clears throat> um, this is also important, and you should write it in your notes today. Um, these are the properties of a quadrilateral. Um, in a quadrilateral, both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. Number two. Both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. That means same size and same shape. Number three, both pairs of opposite angles are congruent. Again, congruent means same size and same shape. Number four, consecutive angles are supplementary. That means they add up to 180 degrees. And finally, diagonals bisect, bisect each other. So that means divide equally in two. Please take a moment, write these down in your notebook. When you're ready to move on, please press play. So first of all, we're going to look at rectangles. Rectangles are a type of quadrilateral. A quadrilateral is a rectangle only if it has four right angles and the diagonals are congruent. And I needed to move this X over, but it should be over in front of that rectangle. And this also would probably be something to write down in your notes, um, since later on we're going to have to classify different quadrilaterals. This will be helpful to look back at. Press pause and then play when you're ready to move on. Next we're going to be talking about a rhombus and a square. A quadrilateral is a rhombus if and only if it has four congruent sides, the diagonals bisect a pair of opposite angles, and the diagonals are perpendicular. For some reason, our X's in there um, that show our diagonals didn't move over, but um, they should be um, crisscrossing in um, both of the quadrilaterals on this slide. Take a moment. Write this down. You may need to look back and review what does congruent mean? What does bisect mean? What does perpendicular mean? So that you understand um, how we'll classify a rhombus and a square. A trapezoid. A trapezoid um, is a quadrilateral with two parallel sides and two non-parallel sides. And you'll see examples of those below. It would be a good idea to also draw these examples in your notes um, so that you have something to, again, look back on so that you know you can classify a trapezoid correctly. One pair of opposite sides are parallel. If the pair of non-parallel sides are exactly the same length, it's called an isosceles trapezoid. So if a pair of non-parallel sides are exactly the same length, it's called an isosceles trapezoid. This is an example of a kite. Um, it's a quadrilateral with two pairs of equal length adjacent sides. Um, one pair of opposite sides are equal, one diagonal bisects the other, and the diagonals intersect at right angles. So you would be able to see that right here forms a right angle or a 90 degree angle. All 
also when we see lines like this this is telling us since this just has one line this line and this line are congruent same size same shape when we see the double lines here this is telling us that this line and this line are congruent same size and same shape again I would draw this um, illustration of a kite as well just so you'll have that in your notes now we're going to go to our practice problems use as many names as possible to identify each polygon so that means I you shouldn't just stop with one you're going to need to think through what those definitions are and what those qualities and characteristics are refer back to your notes and think of all of the different names that we could name these polygons you should have names for num uh, figure one, two, three, and four. Take a moment, pause, refer back to your notes, and see if you can find all of the possible names. Press play when you're ready to move on. Okay, for number one, we could classify this um, as a rectangle. It's a, it's a quadrilateral and also a parallelogram. For number two, this is a rhombus. It is a quadrilateral, it is a parallelogram, and we have rhombus on there again. So it has three names that would be correct. For figure three, this is a parallelogram and a quadrilateral. And for number four, this is a square, a rectangle, a quadrilateral, a parallelogram, and a rhombus. Now I know yesterday in our lesson that blew some people's minds that we could um, talk about a square and a rectangle and how that fits together. So um, think about those, make sure that you've gotten all of them, and understand why we would classify figure four with all of those names. This is our practice word problem. Is it possible to draw a quadrilateral that is not a rectangle but has at least one right angle? So it will not be a rectangle but should have one right angle, which is a 90 degree angle. There's a few examples down here to kind of help you direct your thinking. Um, and go ahead and try this and then explain why it's possible or not possible. Press play um, whenever you're ready to take a look at our, our answer to our word problem. It is possible to draw a quadrilateral that is not a rectangle but has at least one right angle. Um, and this is a right trapezoid. It has two right angles. Here would be a right angle, and here would be a right angle. If you got that, give yourself a pat on the back. This requires a lot of thinking to figure these out. Now it's time to challenge ourselves. Um, for this challenge problem, there are eight statements. Next to each statement, you need to write if this is always, sometimes, or never true. So number one, all quadrilaterals are polygons. Is that always correct, sometimes correct, or never correct? Number two, all trapezoids are rectangles. Again, you need to answer this as always, sometimes, or never. Number three, a rectangle is a square. Number four, all squares are rhombuses. Number five, a quadrilateral is a trapezoid. Number six, all parallelograms are trapezoids. Number seven, a rectangle is a quadrilateral. And number eight, a rhombus is a square. You should look back through today's lesson to see how we classified the special um, quadrilaterals, but you also might need to look back to 15.3, 15.2, or 15.1, or even get your textbook out as we think through these um, statements to see if they are always, sometimes, or never correct. We'll take a look at these tomorrow. Um, do your best, take some time on them, really think about this, about how we're going to classify these different um, figures. To finish up, make sure you review your learning goals. See if you were able to meet those learning goals. If not, you might need to go back and do a little extra studying. Write down the learning goals in your journal. Um, did you write the new vocabulary words? Those were very important to help us understand the properties of special quadrilaterals. Did you write down the properties of the special quadrilaterals? Do you have the answers to your practice problems? Did you also write down examples of some of those special quadrilaterals that we were discussing? Do you have the answers to the practice word problem in your journal? 
Have you answered each of the challenge problem questions with always, sometimes, or never? If you've done all those things, you've now completed lesson 15-4, and we'll see you tomorrow. Um, give yourself a pat on the back. This does require a lot of thinking and a lot of studying, even though it doesn't require computation. So make sure you really understand that new vocabulary. And um, if you need some more work on it, go back through, take a look at it, and we'll do some practice in class as well.